Hello everyone, welcome back to the Indie Geek Guide channel. Hope you're well. We're back with the murder and serial killing web of intrigue that is Hannibal. Last time on, we had a totem of death, a story of a serial killer who fucked up royally and put his son on the top of the totem, unbeknownst to him. Lance Henriksen showed up just to be berated by Will and Jack at the end. We also had Abigail moving forward with uh, writing a book or getting Freddie to write a book on her behalf and to tell her side of the story. She finally opened up to Hannibal saying, I was involved with the murders that my dad was doing, but I was the victim as well still. He was making me do it. He was threatening me with my death if I didn't. All of this drama, so many puzzle pieces fell into place but now i do have questions about the future about where this is all going to go will is steadily losing himself a bit by bit last time he managed to lose a whole chunk of time it was about three hours or so uh where he was on the beach with the murder totem and then he was just in hannibal's office could have done anything in those three hours anything could have happened maybe one of the personalities of the serial killers he's been uh empathizing with took over who knows anything could have happened. But before we jump in, please remember to hit the thumbs up button if you do enjoy the reaction and the review that happens afterwards. Also consider subscribing and supporting the channel that way. Social links in the description, including the Discord server and my Twitch channel, twitch.tv forward slash guy. We play video games regularly on the weekend and on Tuesday, so make sure you're going over there and hanging out. But that's everything. Let's jump into another episode of Super Happy Murder Time. Why not? Let's do that. <laughs> Brilliant. We're opening with a creepy barn. We're gonna get a ghost this time. <laughs> it's open. It's open. Now there's someone creeping around in the attic. What the fuck's going on? <laughs> Fuck this. Fuck all of this. What is this? The grudge all of a sudden or fucking the conjuring? I like how nonchalant she is about this fucking hole in the roof. What the fuck is going- Oh my god! <laughs> what the fuck is happening? You've taken a life. Yeah. Yeah, so have you. Yeah, more than one. <laughs> Quite a long list. I want you to focus on the present moment. But now, often as you can, think of where you are. Baltimore, Maryland. I don't think Will's taking this My seriously. This is Will Graham. Uh, Will? Will, you, you good, bud? You okay? How concerned should I be out of 10? Oh, God. What's happening? What's happening? <laughs> Okay, okay, he's investigating. He's investigating. Oh, I was panicked for a moment. <sighs> you reconstruct the thinking of a killer. You don't think of yourself as the killer. I got lost. Um, <laughs> Jack, I think you need to have a word with someone about that. <laughs> do you have anyone that does this better unbroken than I do broken? No. And that's why he keeps throwing you out on a fish hook. Like, go on, Will. Go on. You can deal with this. Looks like he was trying to pull her skin back. Like he was removing a mask. Well, that piqued Will's interest. I wasn't savage. It was lonely. It was desperate. Sad. I know what kind of crazy I am, and this isn't that kind of crazy. This could be a tumor. A, a, a blood clot. I guess we can't rule anything out. It I could well be any of those things. But if it isn't physiological, then you have to accept what you're struggling with. is mental illness. Yes. If this is what it takes for him to go prove whatever the situation is to himself, all aboard the proving train. <laughs> and what exactly does encephalitis smell like? It has heat, a fevered sweetness. Is that magic smell again. He did have that look on his face in that one episode where he was like, I smell something on you, Will. It is so rare to be able to study the psychological effect of this type of malady on a person's mind. 
more rare still to be able to study the neurological effects. A doctor has to weigh the ultimate benefit of scientific study. I'm getting bad vibes out of this. <laughs> I just treat him like a lab rat. The right side of his brain is completely inflamed. We didn't find anything abnormal. There's nothing wrong with you neurologically. Oh my god. This. This bullshit. <laughs> I knew I had bad vibes. Okay, Will. Why are we here? Why have you come back here? Why are you doing this to yourself, buddy? <laughs> There's a fucking gremlin! There's a fucking gremlin under the bed! What the fuck? What the fuck? What's real anymore? Why did you call me? Because... I'm not entirely sure what I saw was real. Yeah, I would have my doubts. That's for damn sure. But she can't see faces. If she did kill Bethel Lebeau, she might not even know she did it. Then why did she come back? To convince herself she didn't. Maybe they're more alike. You wouldn't publish anything about me, would you, Dr. Lecter? If there were ever anything that might be of therapeutic value to others, I'd abstract it in a form that would be totally unrecognizable. <laughs> the inability to identify others is associated with Kutats. It's a misfiring in the areas of the brain which recognize faces, and also in the amygdala, which adds emotion to those recognitions. So she, she reached out to someone she loved, someone she trusted. She felt betrayed, became violent. She can't trust anything or anyone she once knew to be trustworthy. Well, this is like looking into a crystal ball for you, it feels like, <laughs> like of what potential could go wrong. <laughs> oh dear. Oh no. Will made a friend. When did you first recognize that your daughter was struggling with mental illness? When she was nine, and she told me that she was thinking about killing me, and said that she was already dead. But mostly what I learned is uh, how little is actually known about mental illness. It's rarely about finding solutions. It's just more about Managing expectations. That does ring true. Oh dear. I think this is maybe the first the first killer of the bunch who I've felt bad for. <laughs> you didn't kill Miriam Last, the Chesapeake Ripper did. It didn't feel that way to me. She was a student. I'm a teacher. I'm still just as responsible for you as I was for her. I'll take my own responsibility. Wow, Jack's actually Jack's actually owning up to this. Why are you still here when the both of us know that this is bad for you? I think that the work you do here has created a sense of stability for you. Stability requires strong foundations, Jack. My moorings are built on sand. I'm not sand. I am bedrock. When you doubt yourself, you don't have to doubt me too. I mean, he's trying. He's trying, I guess, in his own way to help. Do you put out the fire? Or do you let him burn? Well, it's my friend. We will put out the fire. Okay. It's necessary. Good. He has Good to know. <laughs> I'm just wondering if you'll know when it is too late. All right. Is it necessary to do this in a really dark, spooky room? Or was he dreaming again? Unless this is some sort of elaborate setup that the Doctor and Hannibal have put together. Not gonna have a face. Is this real? <laughs> Is it real? Is anything real? Okay, it's real. It's real. Fuck this show. Fucking messing with me. <laughs> Maybe the killer has found empathy with Will. I, I, I told her. Tried to tell her. The night I saw her, I tried to tell her. She was alive. Maybe she heard me. Can someone maybe, like, stay with Will? Maybe?
Oh my god, is she under the bed? Is she under the bed? How did she get past all the dogs in the first place? Don't fucking do this to me, show. Don't do this. Hi. Hi. Hi, friend. I mean, if she, if they, what, what happens to her? Fucking hell. <laughs> this episode is fucking my head. <laughs> really want to talk to this young woman when she comes to. How much do you think she'll remember? I sincerely hope for her sake she doesn't remember much. Yeah, tell me about it, right? Oh my god, how- I was thinking this. I was fucking thinking something like this might have happened. <laughs> and she just happened to see it. Like it was like an elaborate fucking Hannibal plan. <laughs> the whole time. Oh, she remembers- she saw something, just not Hannibal's face, I guess. Jesus Christ, the... Just when you think. <laughs> just when you think you've got a handle on things, and... Yep, yep, that's Hannibal, I guess. That's Hannibal. <laughs> well, wasn't that an interesting little journey into madness, huh? <laughs> so we had a killer who was, like, a literal representation of Will in a lot of ways in terms of where he fears... He might end up going when he can't trust things around him anymore he doesn't recognize things anymore like all his biggest fears are being sort of manifested in this in this girl but the whole opening to this was like out of like some sort of creature feature horror movie like like i, I didn't expect the show would lean in that kind of a direction not as heavily as it did here and yet somehow even though you open it that way with like you know conjuring grudge-esque styled killer you still feel bad for her by the, not even the end of the episode like maybe like over over halfway just somewhere around that mark she, i was like oh this is this is fucked she's just a confused girl who's sort of lost her mind and there was no help for her when she needed it and it's just deteriorated from there until she meets will who ironically ends up kind of being her beacon of hope and light which you know i hope helps will as well in a roundabout sort of way saying that he could help someone who uh was like his fear of what he might end up being like if he was able to help someone in that position that maybe he can help himself at some point maybe that's where that's going but no i did really enjoy that whole setup of I was wondering what this episode was going to be, like what we were going to focus on, and I was kind of happy that we had an episode that focused on Will a little bit more, because it feels like he's just been slowly, like, snowballing into this, into this wherever he's going, basically, and now we had an episode that was focused kind of purely on him. We now know he has got, like, a physical problem going on in his brain, uh, on one side of his brain completely, but Hannibal and his doctor friend decided nope we're not going to tell him we're going to use him as a guinea pig and uh, see how far we can push this see what the effects are and then Hannibal went a whole other step further which you know I was like yep I, I feel like I this is going to get shady and boy oh boy did it it went beyond shady <laughs> it went somewhere completely dark just pitch black so that's another plate spinning in the air like how far is Hannibal going to push this now like, he's like, oh, he's my friend, but I really want to understand how far this goes. <laughs> and he did say, he did say he would put out the fire when the time comes if he has to. But I, I'm, you know, questioning whether he will know when that time is, when the appropriate time to do that might be. <laughs> we also had Jack, like, confronting Will in a, you know, we've had it a little bit in the past, but this time we had an actual conversation between the two of them about where will is going where he's at right now and jack wanting to like will you can trust in me i can be your foundation 
and you know it, whenever you doubt yourself you don't have to doubt me as well like all of that kind of conversation at least he is recognizing and like actually saying to will like hey i'm fucking up here and i have fucked up in the past and i need to do something to rectify those mistakes and i don't want the same things that have happened in the past to happen to you he said it out loud i don't know if he's going to handle it correctly <laughs> if it were me if it were me in that position, I just feel like the best course of action would be to just lower, like, at least scale back Will's duties, as it were. Like, just take him off as many cases. Don't have him as thrown into the deep end as Jack does throw him into. But here he kind of was like, no, you can still do the job, but just trust me. Like, that was what I kind of got from that scene, and I don't know if that is... 100% helpful because at the end of the day Will needs to be able to trust himself more than anything he needs to be able to trust himself in those situations and yeah interesting we'll see where that goes but it was it was interesting to see that Jack was actually owning up to certain aspects of his failures I don't know if he's got the right approach to make those failures better as of yet I guess we will see I am slightly thinking that maybe Hannibal's putting out the fire as he put it in terms of like turning the off switch on this experiment on Will and how far he's willing to push it, maybe getting rid of Jack. That might be the putting out the fire <laughs> he is referring to. Like if things go too far, how do I pull it all back? How do we get the reset button on Will? Um, remove Jack. That is probably the way to do it because I don't think anybody else in the FBI would be hiring or using Will in the way that Jack is so maybe maybe that's what will happen i did feel like this episode overall was kind of setting up the what can you trust you know, like the audience like obviously the will is asking that question about himself but it's also now throwing it at the audience what can you trust what can you trust what you're looking at especially if you're seeing it through will's pov like i had this fear last time and it seems like they are planning to capitalize on it in some way we obviously still haven't got the answers as to what's happening in his lost time if we're ever going to get the answers maybe we won't um we don't know if he's behaving like himself in those missing times or or not but we do know he recognizes it which i guess is important he does recognize that there is something going wrong with him he's not just uh like ignoring it or doesn't realize that it's happening apart from like drawing the clock faces that he's not picking up on like he he thinks he's just drawing a normal clock face, but in reality, it's all squiggly, which may well have more to do with the actual physical problems that are going on in his brain rather than uh, the psychological ones. I must admit, I'm not too familiar with what the what they diagnosed him with. I've gone what they said it was called now, but I, 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 it's, t it's a term I've not heard before, so I don't actually know what it is. So if you if you're happy to put that in the comments and let me know, uh, that would be appreciated. Um, but yeah, I, I, all I know is there is a physical problem going on in his head that they're looking, well, not they, because one of them's dead now. Uh, Hannibal is going to push and kind of exploit for his own research purposes. And it does seem like his research purposes are for his own curiosity more than anything. He's not doing it in order to get a publication or anything along those lines. He is literally doing it because he is fascinated by it and wants to understand it. We also got the return of Hannibal's super smelling nose picking up on things. I do wonder, like, the way he describes what certain things smell of is like, how does he, how does he recognize the smell of something? Does that make sense? Like, how does he know that that smell indicates this? Like, unless he's well versed in the smelling arts that he, <laughs> that he's just sort of learned it through living with it, I guess, maybe, but. I don't know, it's it's interesting. It's an interesting thing. But I did wonder, because in that episode when uh, Will first sort of uh, indicated that he might might have something wrong in his, in his brain, I think it was the episode where, where we discovered that Jack's uh, wife um, had cancer. And at the end of that episode, uh, Hannibal did give a little little nostril flare at the very end when he was talking to Will. So that was a little... There was a little hint of there maybe something down the line coming, which I did think of at the time. But no, I did enjoy this episode. I really did enjoy... I didn't expect it, obviously, but I did enjoy how far they were willing to lean into, you know, your traditional horror-esque kind of vibe at the start, especially. And, you know, it kept going throughout. It wasn't until the end where we, 
you know, the gears shifted and suddenly you had Will and uh, and uh, and the girl sort of seeing eye to eye and sort of recognizing one another. Uh, there and that gear shift worked because the rest of the episode had been played in such a different way. I felt like it felt like a true, just like breath of air when uh, when that conversation between them happened. But like I was saying, I did enjoy all the horror stuff. It looked like it must have been fun for them to shoot and just just completely lean into that stuff. So I wasn't expecting that kind of horror to find its way into this show. I thought we would just be going for the pure sort of psychological thriller horror kind of vibes in this show. And now now we got this. It's just a nice way to mix things up a little bit, I guess. So yeah, I enjoyed that. But it definitely seems like we're going to be seeing that character again. She has a memory that could implicate Hannibal in the murder of someone. And he's just kind of like, well, I hope she doesn't. I hope she doesn't remember it, please, because uh, that would be bad for everyone. <laughs> but it definitely feels like that's a seed firmly planted that is going to come back around. I mean, we've only got what three, three episodes. We also had Will building up more of a relationship with one of the forensic team in this uh, in this episode. Like he called her to come and help him with the reanalyzing of the scene after he had his moment out there. So that's that's interesting. That definitely seems to be having a, a different relationship for Will in here. I mean, they've been sort of building that up slowly, kind of in the background in, in the episodes as we've gone along, but largely we've only really seen Will interacting with either Alana Bloom, uh, Hannibal, or Jack. And that's by and large been it. And then on occasion, the forensic team and, uh, and her. But here it seems like, oh, they actually, you know, there seems to be a building of a relationship there going forward. She seems to want to, to help him and it was it's kind of stuff in that other episode where she said yo if you're honest with me i'll be honest with you and uh, i will help you all that all that good stuff so maybe maybe she's going to come in with the save and be an mvp down the line and uh help him out of a tough situation that that feels like there is a safety net being built there with that character but who knows that is just pure speculation into the wind but it definitely feels like we're going somewhere with that of course it could be the polar opposite and uh Will could go completely off kilter and end up killing her, and uh, that that would be awful. That that would be awful. But I don't put it beyond this show that that might happen. So just saying, just saying. <laughs> but no, I enjoyed this episode. I enjoyed the idea of Will going up against something that visualized and manifested his fears about where he could be going. It's kind of similar to the Hannibal and Tobias thing, like Hannibal dealing with someone who was a physical version of parts of himself and here we had will dealing with the same kind of idea the, the idea of what a physical version of what his fears about himself might be and yeah interesting I, I like exploring that stuff and obviously the further exploration of how far hannibal's willing to go even if he does say will's my friend i'm still willing to to push this for the sake of science god damn it <laughs> he also had a kind of a i've not seen the movie it's on the list of things to do on the channel one day um american psycho but i do recognize that image of the suit underneath the plastic thing like uh, that i felt like that was kind of a kind of reference to to that but i might be wrong but i I, just, I have seen that image though even though i've not seen the movie but they do seem to be pretty fond of just throwing in the odd kind of uh i was about to say subtle movie reference but the, sh the shiny ones were not subtle whatsoever um but they do seem to have fun with that kind of stuff but yeah another solid episode of hannibal makes me intrigued for what's gonna happen next good old good old scary message with my mind time again once again and i'm sure that will continue as we push forward towards the end of the first season exciting times slightly worrying times <laughs> oh boy thank you for watching this one guys if you enjoyed it please press the thumbs up button helps me know you liked it helps to get seen by more people also consider subscribing and supporting the channel that way there are social links down below including the discord server and my twitch channel which we go live on on the weekends and on tuesdays so come on over hang out in the chat and all that good stuff but other than that thank you for watching and i'll catch you on the next one